Hey Hotshots, Jess with Emotional Fire Academy here today to talk about taking your attention off of autopilot so you can feel amazing now. It is that easy. Welcome, I'm Jess. This is uh, the channel where we learn tactical mindfulness so that we can live epic, amazing lives with um, awesome results, feel good more often than not, and see the outcomes we want in life. That's what we do here at Emotional Fire Academy. Welcome, I am Jess. So, uh, I made a video a few weeks ago about standing up for yourself um, by not reacting. Go ahead and check that out. It links very closely with this video because our two most powerful faculties that we have as human beings are how we're framing something using our story, our, our language, and then where our attention is going. And today I want to talk about the attention element of this equation because Often, if we let these things run on autopilot, which is, you know, we've trained them to run on autopilot, we've done, you know, similar things throughout life so habitually that they become kind of then unconscious patterns. Our thoughts are one of them, right? The stories we're telling are one of them. And then our attention is another one that can totally be on autopilot. So how do we know if our attention is on autopilot? Um... We find ourselves just fixating on things, right? We find ourselves fixating on things, on problems, on issues, and not being able to let them go. That is one way that we know we're on autopilot, right? When we feel kind of like we've lost our power to our attention, to whatever is uh, scariest, loudest, biggest in front of us, and we can't help but pay attention to it. This is kind of the tactic that news channels use, right? They keep putting out scary, fearful, you know, big, they use big words. It's very attention grabbing, right? This is how people grab our attention. They either escalate their behavior, they escalate the situation, they describe it in big, scary terms. They want to grab our attention. And in order to start taking back our attention, taking it off of autopilot and feeling good, and not being victimized by what where our attention is held uh, takes a little bit of intentional, conscious redirection. And that's okay. That's okay. That's, you know, when we're crossing that threshold between taking something off of autopilot and being intentional about it, there is some energy required to make that shift. Because, right, it's easy to do old stuff. It's easy to just let our attention be drawn to whatever is shiniest or loudest or scariest. It's easy to do that. That takes very little energy. So uh, it's okay if at first, you know, as we're doing this, it takes some conscious attention but the more in energy. But the more we do it, then we're retraining, reprogramming ourselves, right? I made a video about triggers about reprogramming ourselves. I'll link it above. This is how we take control again and we reprogram intentionally by investing some time and energy and effort and then until it becomes habitual and then that is our new program. That's what runs without, you know, subconsciously. That's what runs without all the <laughs> energy investment. It just will run. That will become our new normal. So, um, again, when we're focused on problems all the time when we're just, you know, worried about um, how to deal with them and that's where our attention is going, that can be very draining, right? We don't feel in control of our lives. We just feel like, you know, and that starts to guide our behavior. Our behavior responds to what we're paying attention to because attention is the physiological aspect of, you know, where we're directing our senses. On the emotional fire triangle, our attention is you know, how are we literally directing our body? And that's, that's what we are focusing is a structural, it gives structure to all of the data that our body is perceiving, right? When we intentionally focus or give attention to something in particular, we are, we are literally directing our senses into that object or into that perspective and giving structure to all of this data, giving, you know, all the data, because it's all, it's all available to us all the time. All this data is constantly there, but we filter out with our attention. So 
I've asked this question before on my channel and you know, what does this actually look like practically? Okay, Jess, I get it. I get it philosophically, but how do we do this on the daily? Um, and this is how we do it on the daily. We start to ask ourselves really deep questions or we just become really good at distracting ourselves, right? When we when we find ourselves fixating on something, we realize that there are so many other perspectives we could take. There are so many other viewpoints we could take. There are so many other things that can be paid attention to, right? So many other things. Not in, only in the context of our own lives, but in terms of, you know, data streams. There are so many other data streams out there. I mean, how many channels on YouTube alone are there? How many TV shows and books and movies and, um, you know, meetups and just people and so many other things that we could be paying attention to. What's happening with our body, what's going on in our community, you know, and they're all available to us all the time. Just because we're not focusing on something doesn't mean it's not, it's not there, right? It feels like it's not there. It feels like it doesn't exist, but it's there for us to access at any moment, right? We can always shift our attention elsewhere in the moment. It's kind of like this diagram, right? When we're, we perceive a situation or something, we're focusing on something is the red dot. And, you know, the interpretations of it, the layers of it, um, you know, if we just are focusing on the inner ring, just the closest ring around that situation. We're very zoomed in on, our focus is very zoomed in. And when we're that close, it can feel, you know, we're, we're literally embodying the problem and we're so close to it that we have a hard time getting any other perspective. But realize that all these other outer rings, these outer orbits are also available for us, should we just move back a little bit in perception, in perspective, uh, to get a different perspective on that and to shift our attention, right? The gravitational force of that, of that problem, of that thing we're fixating on, of that thing we just can't let go of will lessen. The gravity will lessen as we move out into orbit. So uh, what is a good question to ask ourselves is what is this problem not? Or well, the question I was referring to earlier that I said I've asked before, what are you pretending not to know about this situation, to have it be this way? You know, what are you pretending not to know? Uh, so when we ask this, you know, what is this problem not? Okay, so let's say uh, I have some foot pain. Today I have some, some pain in my foot. You know, and I'm really focusing on it. It's really obnoxious to me. I keep thinking about it. I keep focusing on it. Uh, my attention has been captured <laughs> by my foot pain. What is this problem not? Okay, I can still walk. This problem isn't life or death, right? I know this has maybe happened to me before. I know that maybe I just need to get new shoes. I know that... Uh, you know, I can, I can still do the exercises I want to do around this foot pain. I know when I don't pay attention to it, it feels better. So did you feel me kind of going out into those concentric rings? What is this problem not? So I got some distance from that and in, it helped me to shift my attention away from, there's a problem I have to deal with it right now. There's a problem I have to deal with it right now. Foot pain, foot pain, foot pain, foot pain, right? Um, yeah. And then as I'm kind of like, you know, I'm going to go shift my attention away from my foot and go plant my garden or go read a book or, and then it literally disappears. <laughs> the foot pain, like when we really can direct our attention out, you know, to an outer ring, to something totally different, totally not even connected to the foot, you know, get lost in a book. It's like the foot pain doesn't exist. Oh, but then the minute I think about it again, the moment I redirect my attention back to it, oh, there it is again. So this is how we, you know, instead of just letting our attention be drawn to things that are, seem that they need our attention, that they demand our attention, that I, ha I have to engage with this with my attention, 
Um, this is how we start to consciously get distance from them, get separation from them, not make them such a big deal. And in doing that, they become less of a big deal. Like literally. And will sometimes just totally self, totally self resolve. You know, they'll, they'll just resolve on themselves by us removing attention from them. Because, you know, one of the practices that I've been doing lately is really feeling blessed by life, you know, really beyond even gratitude. Um, I like gratitude as a practice, but, you know, often we tend to just, again, fixate on problems in our life. You know, we, we ruminate over problems, we give them a lot of thought energy, and then our attention, we're constantly giving our attention to that. And one of the things that I've been doing is shifting more to, you know, learning and things that really are worthy of my attention, feeling blessed, feeling grateful and like, wow, I love where I live. I love, I'm so, you know, my body is healthy. I'm, you know, and really f soaking up the juice of that with my attention, you know, really f focusing my attention on those things as opposed to, you know, what I'm perceive as the problems that need solutions and I need to fix it. And, you know, that that's a whole different state of consciousness. That's a whole, whole different state of consciousness. So if there's something in your life that's bothering you, if there's someone that's bothering you, if there is um, an issue that you're dealing with, give yourself the gift of breaking your attention from it, at least for a little while. And feel the relief of that. Feel the relief of, you know, go immerse yourself in something that is interesting. Go turn your attention towards uh, something else in your environment and remove it from that little, that planet that has the gravity to draw your attention in. And you're not only going to find that you feel better immediately, right? You really, if you really get into what you're paying attention to fully, 100%, you've given your, all of your attention to, to some funny YouTube video or to meeting a friend for coffee and you're really in it with them, you're going to feel such relief. And if you make this a practice of really starting to, you know, r realize what the problem isn't, what is this problem not? It's not the end of the world. It's not, um, like I said in my other video, it's a rock, not a dam. It doesn't have to stop my flow. I can keep flowing and use my attention for my benefit, use my attention for my well-being so that I feel good the majority of the time instead of getting hooked, my attention getting hooked by something and then fixating on it and not being able to break that fixation. So let me know what you thought. Drop a comment below. I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on this and I hope it was a helpful video for you and have a great day.